keeps the aphids off the plants. It keeps the white butterflies from laying their eggs and putting caterpillars all over everything. Looks pretty cozy and protected. <laughs> Did you have that planned? <laughs> <laughs> just slide the cover up halfway and it kind of just stays right there. And then you can do your work and then just bring it back down and put the rocks back. Uh, very so simple. So your form needs to be quite a bit smaller than uh, what you actually want to end up with. These are great tools. Yeah, they'll so, save your band, Solid. We just demonstrated why you want one of those. Yeah. Put that in there like this. You just grab a hold of this thing. And bend it around. Just like that. Something like that. There. Old Pops gets to sit out in the rain and do the work. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, it's getting wet. I'm just gonna sit in here and just watch Grandpa work there. Yeah. Just a fanatical gardener cares. What, what was that, Dad? <laughs> hey, there's some little beauties. Look at that. And then if you're having to pull this off a couple of times throughout the year to, to do some to do some weeding or wow, something. Look at that. It See it? Cut it? It already it cuts it, and so it doesn't last very long. So I, that's why I've gone to the rocks and the wire hoops at the end, the wire hold downs at the end. Uh, you can get heavier ones. This is one of the lighter weight ones, so you know it doesn't block out too much sunlight. Hi, welcome back to the organic gardening, homesteading, and woodworking channel. It's nice to have you here again. This time we are going to make a row cover hoop bending jig, and we're going to show you how to build that. We're gonna do it in a way that's really easy. It doesn't take a lot of brains to cut the angles of the pieces of wood to make the form. And we'll show you how to make the form, how to bend the steel conduit around the form, and then we're going to install it in the garden and show you the final product. So, here we go. Here we go. First, we're gonna show you the, the plywood uh, that you'll need. You need to find a scrap of plywood that's maybe uh, three foot by four foot, and that's big enough to do this project. Just OSB and will work. We're just using the just an old piece of OSB that we had laying around and uh, trying to utilize stuff so we're not buying it just for this. So first thing you gotta do, you gotta make an arc on this so you know what size of hoops you want. And you have to remember when you get done bending, it will spring out and so it'll be different than what you're actually bending your form is. So your form needs to be quite a bit smaller than uh, what you actually wanna end up with. So we're going to do, try to do four foot, end up with about four foot uh, hoops. And so we're going to make this about 38 and a half inches is kind of what I've come up with. A diameter. Uh, a diameter. So that'd be 19 and a quarter radius. Yeah, 19 and a quarter radius. Inches, inches, yes. So, uh, so we'll make an arc on this and show you how to do that. I got to get the right bit here. So I just use a, just an old, just find an old stick, you know, a piece of scrap laying around. And what I've done here is I just screw this, just a piece of sheetrock, I mean, just a sheetrock screw in here, put it in like that. And then just find a place kind of in the middle of your board where you want to build this. So what I do is I just put that there like that and then take your pencil. You're just holding it there, and holding it at the end. Put it right against the end of the stick you keep your hand on the pivot point, keep it so it doesn't move. And you just strike an arc like that. Very simple. I like that term, strike an arc. That's old. <laughs> so that's the, the easy, cheap way, just old stick and a screw. And so then the next step is to cut some blocks that will just go around here in shorter segments and then we'll cut the angles as we go. So we'll just get on the chop saw here and cut a few pieces. Dad, about how long were those pieces? Uh, those are about 13 or 14 inches. It, it doesn't, doesn't really make any difference. 
They can be shorter, they can be longer. Usually shorter is a little easier. Mm -hmm. So we'll just do a few more. We're gonna need a few of these. So that, they can, they, people can make this with just a jigsaw or something like that. Yeah, you like can that. just you use the whole you, thing. You can even do this as a handsaw if you yeah. want to, if you got a lot of extra energy. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, yeah, so then the next thing is just to put them, well, here I'll do it on this side so you can see it better. You see that this is the arc here, so you just put this edge just so. Just covers We're, we're going to be cover, cut this a radius like this on this piece of wood. So just so it just covers that mark. And then you can just kind of put another one like this. And you can kind of see, you want to kind of split this angle. Um, and just get a rough idea of the, the angle. It doesn't, it's, it's not it's, precise. It's not precise at all. Well, that's what makes it easy. Um, so we'll just cut an angle on this piece here. <laughs> So we'll put that on there like so, just so it's right on the edge here. Mm -hmm. And then the next one, so we can just line this up. I'll get this, make sure this edge covers this mark. And you can kind of just line these two points up. And then on this side, you can just make a mark, right? Like you see this cut here. Where the this, heel of that cut is. Yeah, and just make it a mark here. Like that, yeah. And so then you're just you're just going to be cutting from this point here down to this point here, and that'll get you pretty close mm -hmm. to the angle that you need. So just kind of eyeball it on here, and so there we go. That one's. And it overlaps the line just to here? Yeah, just overlap the line. Mm -hmm. And so then the next one, you can just kind of go like, just make a angle there. About 90 degrees are perpendicular to your radius line, you can kind of guess. Yeah. You can kind of eyeball it. So that goes like that, and then we'll just take another block here. I guess I meant to say 90 degrees from, from, from this, this, yeah, this imaginary so we'll just circle. Put this like, so that we're overlapping this line again. And we go back here and make a mark just like we did before. That's the mark that lines up with right, the heel. Right, the heel here, and then right here. So mm -hmm. that just lines up with that. Mm -hmm. And that goes out to this point here. You line up the point. So you just, you know, just with the other pieces. Cross like that. Okay, last piece. We'll just make a little line there and cut this last one. Okay, so that's the, the blocks all set in. And then you uh, kind of make sure you go along here and you mark where all these blocks set because you're going to need to know right where those blocks go next time you put this back together. So just make a mark all the way around there. And then you need to number them? Yeah, I need to number them. Just, there's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. And then we'll make a, here's our stick again. You need to make sure that screw is sticking out long enough because now we're going to have to draw on top of these blocks and we need some height there so it's not at an angle. So just, mm -hmm. and then put it right where you had it before in the middle when you drew the arc first. So just line that up like that. Take your pencil and strike an arc all the way around here. Just like that, you hold your pencil solid against the end of the stick and make a mark all the way around. And now it's time to cut them. You can do this with a jigsaw. 
works just fine, no problem. I'm gonna use a bandsaw just because I got one and uh, kind of spoiled. So we're gonna do this with the bandsaw. your nail. That doesn't do your blade any good. No, <laughs> I'd say not. Is it a carbide tip? No. That's all good. Somehow I could use a scanner on it. Yeah. I think I'll get the metal detector just so I don't run into any more nails. Yeah, if you have a bandsaw, it's a smart idea to have one of these. Maybe we'll leave a link for one down in the description below. Yeah, these, uh, these are great tools. Yeah, they'll so, save your bandsaw like you see. We just demonstrated why you want one of those. Yeah. <laughs> so just run it over your, you gotta make sure you don't have anything metal on your wrist because it'll catch it and sense it. So that one's good. Maybe. <laughs> That's good. This is picking up the table saw underneath. That's yeah, why it's that's, beeping. Yeah. That's good. Good. Looks like we probably hit the only nail there was in the whole bunch. <laughs> yeah. Hey, can you try it on that piece that does have the nail just to show that it works? Let's see, where's it? Right here? No, it's the first one, I think. Yeah, here. See this? You got the nail right there. There. Yeah, you can see the nail. <laughs> okay, so make sure this thing works. Yep. Well, that's kind of a hidden nail. Maybe you can do it more towards the tip. Usually, that's interesting because it's usually a lot more sensitive than that. It must be just a little tiny piece in there. See yeah, that? it's. Very tiny piece, I guess. Yeah. Anyways, it'll usually find you hold nails. <laughs> yeah, it'll find nails in really deep. Yeah, it's something you should be, you should so do if you're on here. Okay, so now we're going to just line them back up uh, to the uh, lines that we drew on here so you know where they go. So just like that. And, and you, they're numbered, see, so. Three, four. Yeah. Four, five. five goes here. Six. And seven, like that. I think that's good. So now we just gotta screw them down to the board. That's a little bit trickier. So we're just gonna screw these up from the bottom side. So I just pull off the edge of the table and just use some inch and a half screws. Just And on these end ones, the end blocks, takes, they take a little more pressure, so I'll probably put an extra screw in that one. Um, so I just put two screws in each one is what I do. Okay. And then we need just one block put on the end here for the uh, where you kind of wedge the conduit 
It's in the between, starting block. When you're starting, it? yeah, this is starting kind of starting block. So, so we just kind of guess at that. Uh, Try to make it parallel to the the end of the joint right here. Right here, right. So that it'll hold right it as there. tight as it possibly can down at the end. Yeah, we just we may have to adjust it as we go. Okay. Just see how it bends. So you just need to screw that on there, good. All right, there's the jig, and uh, we'll just put our conduit in here and bend, bend it around by hand. So we're going to take this outside, and uh, we've got a pallet out there on the ground that we're going to screw this down to the pallet, and then we'll, because we need something to keep this from twisting like this when we pull on that conduit to bend it. We'll fasten it to the pallet, and the pallet's staked down to the ground, so it can't go anywhere. So that's the next step. We're outside now, and I just put a pallet on the ground, and I put some stakes, a stake here, and there's a stake here, and there's one over there, and the one on that side, just to keep it from turning when we put start bending conduit. So I just gotta screw this down to the pallet. This piece of OSB, this plywood, just so it doesn't move. It doesn't take much to, to hold it in its place. There we go. So that's, that's done. And now we're going to uh, mark halfway on these conduits. These conduits are 10 feet, just a standard half inch EMT conduit. You can get a big box store. These ones came from Home Depot. So these 10 foot, so we just mark these all at five foot so we know where the center is. You want your hoops even on each leg, even on it. So that's the center. And then we need to mark the center of this jig here. So just two foot, just make a mark here. And now we'll line up the mark from the conduit onto that mark. And I'll show you how to do it. So I'll take a piece here and put that black mark right, line it up here so you kind of know, just kind of rotate it around here so you can see kind of where to, where it's gonna end up, end up in here. Mm -hmm. Something about like that. So now you can just measure this right here. The tail. The tail of it. So that's 15 and a half inches. So go back over to here, just mark all these at 15 and a half inches. Didn't have to be super accurate or anything. Okay, so put that in there like this. You just grab a hold of this thing and bend it around. Just like that. Something like that. And there's a hoop. Now, looks like it went a little bit past what we needed. Open it up a little. Yeah. Or you can make a stop mark. We need to change that stop a little bit. Yeah. You can just kind of straighten out the bottom. There. You see how close we came? To four feet? To four feet. Yeah, center on center. That's a little bit over. It looks like they're spread a little bit. Yeah, I spread it out a little bit trying to get those things. So I think we need to move that one block a little bit to get that closer to four feet. So right now, well, at the base of these things were 49 inches. So it's close. So. Yeah, very close. I think that's, that's actually good enough. We can just pull those in 
yeah. a little bit when we stick them in the ground. Half an inch on each side. Yeah. Not much. Not gonna, it's not worth taking it all apart and doing it. So, let's grab another hoop. Stick that, line that black mark up with the end of this board right there. And let's see what this one turned out to be. I think I'm just gonna pull this back a little bit, to straighten out that. Yeah, that's better. About 47 right there. And we'll just unbend it just a little bit, stretch it out. There we go. All right, that looks so nice. Simple. So we just do that to the, all the rest of them. And then we'll put it on the bed, cover our bed, plant some broccoli and cauliflower and put a cover over it. Yeah, so that is the next video is planting brassicas, broccoli, cauliflower. Is there any cabbage, Dad? Not cabbage. Uh, just broccoli and cauliflower. It's just a flowering brassicas. Starting to rain. <laughs> Got a few drips. Well, the wind's picking up out here. Yeah, it is. Getting and the rain. Stormy. Starting to rain. Ah, uh, <laughs> I think we're getting dumped on. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Whoa, it's coming down. The equipment's getting a little wet. Yeah. I think I'm gonna have to Better take it inside. find some cover here. I guess we're going to the extreme for you guys here. Trying to film in the rain. There we go. Got a little bit of cover. Old Pops gets to sit out in the rain and do the work. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it's getting wet. I'm just going to sit in here and just watch Grandpa work there. Yeah. I call him Grandpa because that's what my kids call him, but... It looks like you're getting a little wet there, Dad. Yeah, I'm getting <laughs> wet. <laughs> you're going to be like a... There. <laughs> we got her. <laughs> Your shirt is becoming transparent. Yeah. <laughs> I'm going to put a stake, run a string here, so we can line up one edge of the hoops so all in a nice line. So do you put your hoops in before you actually plant your... Yeah, I, I do. Why? Um, there's really no reason. I mean, you can do it either way. Uh -huh. Put them in afterwards. Uh-huh. Um, So I, I don't really know there's any advantage one way or the other. Uh-huh. I usually just eyeball it. Don't do this, but today we'll do it. There we go. Yeah, I'll grab the hoops. So just put it along that string yeah we just shove it in the ground here and this gives you a tall enough growing area for your your broccoli and cauliflower so it has room to, to grow uh-huh and I suppose if you want to get technical, we can measure this out and see how far apart to put each one. You could, what are you, about four feet? You just use the width of the thing to, is it four feet or is that too close? That's kind of close. I don't know if you, let's try it out. One, how many hoops it takes? <laughs> Three. Have you ever seen hoop walking, four, folks? Five, six, seven. I think I got seven hoops. Might work. That should work. I 
and I try not to step on the beds, packing the soil down. So if, you, if you're a little short-legged, you, you might have to walk on it. <laughs> or go around. <laughs> I suppose if you had very hard soil, which you shouldn't have in your garden, you could always drill a hole <laughs> like we did it for the onions. Yeah. So. Some of those are looking less than four feet. Yeah. That one looks a little small. Can't pull this over a little bit. But it doesn't have to be perfect. Nope. Plants don't care. Just a fanatical gar gardener cares. What, what was that, Dad? <laughs> Just a gardening fanatic cares. Cares one thing. Looking <laughs> nice. <laughs> no, there, there's none of those kind of people watching this. Is there? <laughs> <laughs> no. Okay, let's see. We, we appreciate every one of you guys. Gardening fanatics and beginners, enthusiasts. You bet. Yeah, we want to teach you guys how to amend your own soil and have just a better general understanding of gardening and what to do. I might just use one more and not do the whole whole thing. All right. Oops. If we gotta have the room for the the end to the go end down, to come down. Okay. I think I'll just do this. Give us enough room for what we're doing. Gonna have a covered wagon here without wheels. Now, I just kind of side along the top of it, just kind of see if they're halfway. You could the same elevation. Yeah, you want to sight down there for me and tell me the which one goes up and down? Sure. All right. Let's get in here. Let's have the viewers help us out here. Go to the next one, drop that one down. Yep. Drop this one down? Uh-huh. There we go. And next one needs to go down a ways. Yeah, that's a that's pretty good. Is that next it? one's pretty good. Okay. Yeah. Good. Yeah, so, that's not bad. So get that string out of the way. I gotta hook it down here for you. I can man the camera and do it with my other hand. There we go. Thank you. You're welcome. Now I'll get the broccoli and, and uh, cauliflower and get that planted. Hey, there's some little beauties. Look at that. Yeah, they're What's the date today? Is it March uh, 27th? And All we're right. uh, planting these. Um, I'll, look, I'll look on my phone and not try to trip here as I walk backwards and hold the camera. <laughs> okay. uh, it is the 28th. 28th, okay. So anyway, we're planting on March 28th. It's the right uh, moon phase for them. Okay. And we got one, just one, one day to do it in. Uh, so we want to get them in. Okay, we're going to... Uh, Put the row cover on now and it comes in a 10 foot wide uh, roll it's called agrabon 15 that's the weight of it 15. Uh, you can get heavier ones this is one of the lighter weight ones so you know it doesn't block out too much sunlight and uh, it stays on for the whole season until these plants come out until we harvest them uh, don't have to do anything uh, as far as opening it up or closing it or anything just leave it on and kind of peek through it and see when the broccoli and the cauliflower is ready to harvest. Mm -hmm. And then just pull it off and harvest everything. So here we go, here we go. Stick this on there. Hang on. Go for it. And it's kind of a breezy day today. It's better to do this on a nice calm day, but you don't always have that option. Let me see if I got enough down here. No, a little more. So you're going about a foot past the okay. end of your tillable bed? I'm about uh, four and a half feet past the hoop. Mm -hmm. 
So you can just go ahead and roll that down and set it on the ground. And let's cut that. Your knife might be scissors. There we go. So somewhere about right in here, I think. All right. So you got that cut. Now you got to unfold it and uh, put it down to the ground. <laughs> Did you have that planned? <laughs> <laughs> that works pretty good with the breeze. And just put that seam right in the middle, Luke. The uh, top this, seam? Yeah, right there you go. So it's centered? Yeah. Now we'll just get some rocks and uh, uh, here first, I guess I'll fasten this end down, tie it down so it doesn't go anywhere. And then we'll put weights along the edge. We just use these big metal U hooks to fasten this down at the ends. So are you just bunching it up in the, or twisting it together and then putting it underneath it? I'm just kind of making it? a knot at the end with extra material and then putting the staple over the knot. So then it can't pull out of underneath yeah. it. Yeah. Yeah, maybe we'll grab the camera and show you in detail on this end, okay. how we terminate this and fasten it down at the end. Okay. So you tie the knot there? Yeah, it doesn't really have enough to do much of a knot on this one. So I'm just gonna do the best I can, kind of turn it or twirl it around. And uh, I guess I can make some sort of a knot. Just to... Barely. And then just take the, this big wire staple, it's a heavy duty staple just made out of some heavy wire that I had laying around. And push that down in there. And that's not there, keeps that from sliding through. And then we'll just take a bunch of rocks or whatever you have and just set them along here. And it's good to use rocks that aren't too sharp like if you use bricks, they have a sharp edge on them and it'll tend to tear your fabric and it won't last as long, especially if you get a, a hard wind, a strong wind that comes along. So you want rounded edges. That's why I like using rocks to do this job. Makes, it, makes the hoop cover last. Got that side and then I'll just do the other side. And you want to kind of keep the fabric as tight as you can without, you know, getting too carried away. Uh, that way the wind doesn't get to whipping it around too bad. And I think that's pretty much it. We get the, most of our wind comes from this direction here, so I'm gonna put just a couple extra rocks on this side since it gets a lot of wind through here. How do you get into the row cover so you can access your plants? Uh, if you have to get into it, like maybe doing one or two weedings in the season, you just take the rocks off and then slide this cover up you don't have to undo these ends just slide the cover up halfway and it kind of just stays right there and then you can do your work and then just bring it back down and put the rocks back uh very so, simple so you take the rocks off all one side yeah and then just slide it up halfway all the way down the side yeah okay so it opens a hole so what does it look like inside there well, let's take a look and see see what kind of nice habitat we've made for these plants 
So what does it look like in here? Oh yeah, looks pretty cozy and protected. Yeah, look at those little little plants, aren't they little beauties? They're gonna be growing really well with all the extras they got there and the nice environment to keep the bugs off them. Beautiful. Yeah, all right. And that's how you just would fasten it back down if you need just to do back that. On. Typically you would not be unstapling this or unhooking it from the ground here, but. There we go. Some people might want to use clips for uh, attaching this instead of rocks and uh, those wires at the end. But uh, I've made some clips out of PVC pipe and you can buy a different type of clip, but they're both, they work the same way. So if you had this fabric, this is the same fabric as what's on there. So if you put that on there like that and the wind starts whipping this around, it ends up tearing the fabric right, right along here. Right under there in the corner. And then if you're having to pull this off a couple of times throughout the year to, to do some to do some weeding or wow, something. Look at that. It see it, cut it. it already it cuts it and so it doesn't last very long. So I, that's why I've gone to the rocks and the wire hoops at the end, the wire hold downs at the end. Just because these end up tearing the fabric. Yeah, and it's a lot easier to get in there to work. You don't have to pop all those little clips off yeah. all over the place. You can just kick the rock over with your foot and and then you can slide it up and yeah. So that's that's, that's a good tip. One thing you gotta watch out for. And there it is. All set for the summer until it's ready to harvest. It keeps the uh, aphids off the plants. It keeps the white butterflies from laying their eggs and putting caterpillars all over everything. So the broccoli and cauliflower is nice and clean. When you uh, harvest it, you don't have to worry about all those bugs on it. And, uh, makes it much nicer. Otherwise, it's really hard getting all those aphids off of the, uh, the broccoli and cauliflower. It's almost impossible. Have to soak it in salt water and whatnot. So, so this takes care of that and uh, keeps everything clean. So that's how we do our broccoli and cauliflower. We'll do cabbage a little later once the plants are ready to go out. They're not quite ready yet. Well, I hope all of you enjoyed that tutorial on how to bend your own row cover hoops and how to make the jig to bend them, how to put them in the ground, how to cover it with the fabric. I think that was a lot of fun. If you enjoyed this tutorial, please give us a thumbs up, subscribe too. And if you have any questions or comments, leave them down in the section below. And always remember, Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life.